when we build content, it's often because we want it to rank on Google. Now, ranking content on Google is depending on multiple variables, but the ability to cover a subject completely is extremely important. Today's product showcases Topic Mojo, a platform showing you all of the topics around a keyword. With Topic Mojo, you assure that your website covers all of the important topics so you can show Google that you have authority within the industry. So without further ado, let's dive into Topic Mojo and let me show you how to use it. We are now inside the platform Topic Mojo and right now we can do two things. We can topic model and we can use the question finder. Soon we can also look for the search listening. But in the dashboard here we get a quick overview of what we can do. Then we get some use cases and walkthroughs of Topic Mojo. We get what's new about Topic Mojo and that is about it. Now I just want to jump right into topic modeling. In here is where you enter your keyword, your country and your language that you are focusing on for your website and then you get all of the topics around that keyword. What that means is that all of the topics that Topic Mojo finds important for that specific keyword. Of course, there are some of the nonsense topics you should just ignore, but the main topics you should really focus on because if your website covers all of those topics, then you are really showing Google that you have authority within that industry. Now, I have already done one here, food truck, so we will just jump into that. In the food truck here, you can see multiple things. We have here three different views. We have an overview, a tree, and the grouping. Now, the grouping is my favorite, but before I dive into that, I want you to notice here all of the different sources that Topic Mojo is pulling data from. Here it's pulling data from YouTube, it's pulling data from Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and so many more in order to gather all of the topics for you so you really know what to focus on. This is definitely a unique selling proposition we do not see at Answer the Public. Now when we do scroll down, you can see the phrases here. And all of the phrases are whatever your keyword is, a word in the middle, and then whatever comes after that. So for instance, food truck and craft beer festival food truck and music festival and so on. So in theory, all of these different topics you should be able to cover for your website if you're focused on food trucks, just as an example. Over here, we can see similar food truck is a good business. Here we could write an article explaining whether food truck is a good business or how you make it a good business. And when we just scroll down, you can see that there are a ton of topics. Now, what I would really like to see is a more focused view from Topic Mojo, really focusing and narrowing in on the topics that they find the most important and relevant for the keyword you have chosen. Now, the next segment here is questions, and this is questions that you can easily answer on your blog. So this is questions that are either Googled, they're on YouTube, they're maybe on social media that people are asking. This means that there are definitely search results for this and you should try and Google these different questions to see where Google do not answer the question pretty good and then you can just swoop in there, win the snippet and gain traffic for your website. Now you can see here again we see the same did and then your keyword, will keyword, where can keyword. So for instance, where can food truck park? That's probably a question that's asked a lot and there's probably a lot of good articles on it. But if we go a little bit down, where can I sell food from my food truck? That's a little bit more or less the same question. Where can I rent a food truck? That's a different type of article. Where can I park my food truck UK? See, what you could do here is that you could make an article telling about where you can park food trucks and then you could have a table or you could have something similar where you navigated into different countries and telling about UK, the US, Europe, and so on. So you really just make an article covering multiple topics. As long as it's really helpful, it will rank on Google. But this is just a great way to find all of those topics and article ideas that you can write about. You just have to plot in your specific keyword, maybe your main keyword, and then you will get a ton of topics that you can write about. This is a different type of topics. This is comparison topics. So here it is called best food truck ideas near me. 
and so on. Could also be food truck review sites, could also be food truck at weddings and fairgrounds and so on. So this is basically comparison phrases that you can use also to write articles. What you have to remember is that all of these topics can be that one person has asked about it, but it can also be 100,000 people has asked about this specific topic. So do a little bit of research before you start writing about a specific topic so you don't waste your time. But as we just scroll down here, we get even more topics. We get topics about shopping. And if I scroll further down, we get research topics and so on. So you can see we have a load of topics right here that we can just start writing immediately. Here we have the alphabet soup where it is that we see a lot of different articles. But now what I want to show you is I want to go back to one of the other views, the tree view here. Here it is just a different way of seeing it because this is more or less like we know it from answer the public. See if I zoom in here a little bit, we have food truck and then we have all of the different sections going out. And for each section, we have a lot of different topics that we can write about. This is more or less the view we see from answer the public. So all of these three different views are really depending on what you can use and what works best for you because the data is basically the same. Now in the overview, we do get a little bit more data. We do get trends for this specific keyword and we can see the trend is definitely going up, but it is in seasons. We get search volume and then we get intent. Now the intent here is not like search intent. It is more like whether it's questions, is it phrases, are people shopping? Is it for research, comparison or local? So do not see this as search intent. See it more as how does people really intend to use this keyword? Here they're asking a lot of questions around the keyword, but they're also using phrases for the keywords. If we scroll more down, you can see that they have also pulled in videos for us. So let's say that you're making videos about food trucks. Here you can get a lot of great ideas of what you can do for your food truck channel. Again, if we scroll more down, we can see a lot of tweets about the food truck. Now I chose English as my language when I did this food truck search. So I'm a bit confused to see another language in the tweets, but that's just a minor detail. What we can also see if we scroll even further down is related searches and breakout searches. This is different types of searches for your specific keyword because you can see here, it is basically food trucks in plural, whereas my keyword were in singular. We also have the food truck, food truck festival and so on, but it's not showing us so much data. It is showing us hype though. So hype uh, is very high around the food truck, but it is basically the same as what I wrote and Google is smart enough to figure that out. What we can also do when we scroll further down in the bottom here is see interest by sub region and related topics. So a related topic to a food truck is of course food, it's festival, it's tacos, and it's all of these different elements you see here. The sub region is not super relevant, but you can use it if your website is very niche and focused on a sub region, but often you're just focused on the entire world or a country. Overall, that is topic models. Now let's move on to questions here. Again, I will use the food truck example. To begin with here, we see the same view. We see the trends and the search volume. But now when I scroll down, we see questions. And this is questions from Google, Reddit and Quora. So all of these questions, again, they are searched after. They do not show the search volume, but they do show that people search for these. Now what I will recommend you doing is taking these searches and these questions and then Google them yourself in order to see the results. And if you see some of these questions are not answered probably, then that's your way to get in and create a great article in order to answer especially that question. But this is very simple. It is just showing us all of the questions that they could find. And then you can basically just pick the ones you find relevant. Now the last one I want to show you is trending. Here we can see what is trending in different countries. Right now it's just on United States. And within United States, we can see all of the articles that are trending. We can see Apple is trending right now. We can see some articles about Apple. Furthermore, here we can see something about Walmart and the articles about Walmart that are trending. We can see about Arsenal and what articles are trending about Arsenal and so on. I have not found this view extremely relevant because it is very big topics. 
But of course, if there are some seasonal events or something similar, you can use that as a way to get in and get some traffic. But I do not see this as a sustainable way to generate content and to create articles that will really drive traffic to your website. So this is more like a nice to have until they really develop it into maybe be a little bit more useful than it is right now. When we take a look at the pricing structure, it is very simple. They have a free plan and a premium plan. The free plan, you are limited on everything, but it's a great way for you to test out Topic Mojo in order to see whether it's for you or not. But when you have tested it, and if you do find it valuable, I will really recommend you upgrading because you get unlimited searches. You basically get unlimited features except for the users. You do have to use five users as a max. If you do need more, then you have to contact the support. But other than that, you can use all of the features as much as you want to. Now, when we do compare this pricing to the alternative and to the public, it is quite cheap. The reason being that Topic Mojo is still a new product in the industry and Answer the Public is just much more refined. As I just shown you in the features section, the results we get from Topic Mojo is a little bit more messy compared to Answer the Public. So there is still some quality they need to work with. However, Answer the Public is much more expensive. So you really need to make up for yourself whether you want to pay that extra fee and use Answer the Public or you want to use Topic Mojo and really see whether it's for you or not in the future. Because when we do compare them even more, then Answer the Public are pulling data from some data points, whereas Topic Mojo is pulling data from almost 20 different channels and sources. So you really get a huge data set that you can start analyzing on to choose the right topics for you, whether it's YouTube videos, content for blog posts or just overall some answer posts you want to write then topic mojo is a great way to get started when we do look into the future of topic mojo they are heavily focused on adding more languages both now but also in the future the reason being that the more languages we have the more topic discovery we can do in multiple countries even though your blog is only in one country now, maybe later on you will expand to another country and then it's great to have all of these languages. Then they will add two new modules, search, listening, and they will add topic headlines. Last but not least, they will add reports so you can send out reports for your colleagues or your clients. Now, one thing I do really hope they will work on is the quality of the output. Because even though we do get output we can use, we also get a ton of output that's just useless. So right now it's really a quantitative result we get when it is we run all of these topic discovery reports. So I do really hope that they will work on the quality so we will get less output but more qualitative results. Now moving on to the pros and cons of Topic Mojo, starting with the pros. They are pulling data from almost 20 sources. The pricing is affordable and they have a modern design. Whereas for the cons, I'm missing quality in the output. I'm missing a view where they show me the most heavily important topics for my keyword and data sometimes can be a bit messy. Topic Mojo is definitely a powerful SEO tool that all content writers should have in their arsenal or at least an alternative. Topic Mojo makes it possible for your website to cover all of the topics around your main keyword in order to show Google that you have authority within the industry. Overall, I will give Topic Mojo four stars. But yeah, that is my review of Topic Mojo. I hope that you liked the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions to Topic Mojo or other products you would like me to review, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, let's catch up on the next one.